So let's join Roly in this historical journey through this world that Walt built. Get ready to enjoy a side of Disneyland you've never seen before as we take a walk in the park with Disney legend Roland Fargo Crump. There's um, hundreds of little behind the scenes stories about how we built Disneyland and also how we maintained it and little stories that, that no one knows uh, except possibly me. <laughs> and I wanna pass these on to you because I think they're little treasures. In fact, I think everything that we talk about is a, is a treasure. Let me tell you one of my favorite stories about Walt and what he was really like as a person. He and Emil were sitting on City Hall steps. This is when they first opened up Disneyland and they were having a sandwich. And Walt looked up and there was a nun walking with a rope attached to a little kid and then that kid was attached to another kid by a rope and there was a whole string of these kids attached to each other by ropes and then the last one was a nun and Walt watched them walk by and so he got up and went over and introduced himself to the head nun and said what is this and she said well these are underprivileged children that we want to bring to Disneyland and Walt said, well, how much did you pay? And she told him. So Walt went to the main gate and got her money back and gave her the money and said to her, no underprivileged children is going to ever have to pay to come into Disneyland. So that gives you kind of an, a, an inside clue of what the old man was like, which is absolutely gorgeous. One of the greatest little stories of all about the small world was where did the flitter come from on the sets? And it really is interesting because accidents happen. We call them happy accidents, which is really kind of neat. Anyway, when we were getting ready to set up all the sets, the animated figures and the toys in It's a Small World on a soundstage to show it to Walt so Walt would get a feeling of what the ride was going to be like. And so what happened was they had it all set up. They had my toys that I'd been working on and designing. They had the little uh, dancers and singers that came from Maypole that were ready to go. And also all the sets that Garage Studios had built. Well, Mary Blair and I went over when they were setting it up to kind of get a feel of how the show would look because we were also going to have the music and the lighting there as well for Walt. And we were standing there looking at the sets and then Mary and I both looked at each other and realized there was something wrong. And what was wrong was that when I was doing the toys, I used little jewels for the eyes on the toys and I used a lot of flitter and tassels and fun things on their costuming. Well, when you put them in with the sets, the sets went dead because they had no life, no life whatsoever. So Mary and I just said, we've got to do something about the sets because it's we have to have a marriage here. We have to have a marriage of the sets and the little characters. So what we decided to do was put Flitter on the sets. Well, what we did was we went downtown LA and we bought about $200 worth of Flitter and came back and took the Flitter and laid them on little, put the Flitter on little pieces of cardboard and then we would put the glue onto the sets of what we wanted the flitter to be on, and then we would blow the flitter off the little cardboard onto the sets. And while we were doing it, some of the guys from the uh, county department came over, and uh, actually the finance department, and were really upset because we had spent $200 on all that flitter, and they were really concerned about that, and we thought, well, are you kidding? $200 for flitter when it's gonna make all the difference in the world? And so what we did, and that's what we did. So when you go through the ride, I want you to look at all the flitter that was in that area. And remember that when we did it the first time, uh, we did it while they were standing up. But I just think it's one of the greatest little stories in the world about the fact of the technology in those days was just blow. <laughs> so we had a lot of fun with that. I certainly hope that the walk in the park enlightened you, gave you some information that you never knew before, and hopefully you'll pass this information on to other people so that when they go to the park, they can find all these little treasures as well. And it's, and it's been a delight for me to take you through this. 
So I want you to enjoy it, remember it, and pass it on.